Welcome to the Dying Light 100% speedrunning guide. In this part we will cover just a general movement tips and tricks which will be used in a speedrun. So let's get started. This game is all about running around, jumping and climbing obstacles, so in order to be fast in this game we want to optimize all of the above. And if we want to be even faster we want to skip as much as possible of running, climbing and jumping. So let's get started with climbing part. Uh, climbing is generally a small thing so we want to avoid as much climbing as possible because well generally speaking climbing animations are pretty much long so we don't want to have a lot of them in a speed run so how can we minimize having uh, climbing animations general rule of thumb is uh, you want to approach ledges from well at least 19 degrees maybe slightly from below but generally you want to approach from above different ledges. If you're approaching ledge from below, you most likely will get a climbing animation and the more obtuse angle to the ledge, the longer climbing animation it would be. So let's say if you got something like this, this animation is definitely shorter than the previous, uh, than the previous one. So how do you minimize having animations? Let's use this pole as an example. So if, for example, we want to jump on this thing, we can just use a spacebar and we will have an animation. We don't want having an animation, so what can we do instead? We can try looking away from the ledge, jumping, and then at the highest point of our jump, turn towards the ledge and hold spacebar to climb it. So what should happen? In theory, uh, we get some height and we make angle between us and obstacle more or less perpendicular. So in theory, it should skip climbing animation entirely. So let's try it. I missed it first time, but second time it works just fine. We were able to jump higher than our head, which is amazing treat for a human. And this is possible in this game. So, even if it's seemingly way too high jump, you can still skip some animations by moving your camera to the side. Also, you can use environment to your advantage. For example, you want to climb this fan. Obviously, this will always produce a climbing animation, even if you try to do a spinning trick. It's still not enough to skip animation. You can, for example, use this as a helper to jump here, or you can just jump on a hood of the van to skip animation. So basically, take a look around. Maybe not always the shortest path is the fastest one. Always look around for an environment and use anything to your advantage. That's basically the general rule on how to climb in this game. So the next part would be how to run. Also, if you want to jump over this fence, there is seemingly nothing we can use. When this part is way too high, maybe we can jump like this, like this, and like this, but it's still a big deter, so luckily we can jump on this pole and jump over the fence, which is anyway faster than just climbing over the fence. So yeah, when it comes to the running, uh, we won't be running a lot in this game because we have a nice grappling hook which will save a lot of headaches for us, but in some parts of the game we won't have this grappling hook or we will have it dis disabled. For example, at the start of the game we won't have high level enough to have a grappling hook so we will have to run around the city around the tower and during running we will eventually run out of stamina like i am doing right now you can see crane cannot run anymore so we can just use kick to instantly restore our running stamina also uh, Jumping in this game drains uh, way more stamina than just running, so the more jumping you do, the faster you will run out of stamina. This is why I'm jumping to quickly get tired. Use kick and keep running again. Pretty easy and simple. So basically this is the only thing which is interesting about running. 
hooks because we won't be running a ward in this game. Most of the time we will use a grappling hook. So grappling hook is a whole different mechanic. However, it follows the same general rule as climbing. Try to approach wedge from at least perpendicular angle. So for example, if you'll try grappling like this, most likely we will get a climbing animation, which we want to skip. So for example, you can use a higher point to use this grappling hook and we can skip animation like this which is nice another thing you can do to try to mitigate the thing the angle between you and wedge is to jump before using a grappling hook moreover uh, there is another maybe intended maybe unintended mechanic is uh, when you use grappling hook during the animation of launching the hook you actually maintain your velocity and vector of it so if we will try jumping and at the highest basically at the highest speed of our jump basically somewhere around the start of jumping we will use grappling hook we will maintain our vertical velocity without getting affected by gravity at all so it will be uh, it will extend our jump height a little bit more. So let's say this is our normal jump height, but is using grappling hook. We can jump slightly higher. So we can also use this to our advantage. For example, from this angle previously we had climbing animation, but with jumping combined, we can skip it. So sometimes you can just jump and pray that you skip climbing animation. It's not always the case, obviously, but you may try it and you may be lucky with skipping animation. Another important technique with using grappling hook is uh, grappling cancellation, which is pretty much simple trick. Uh, you can you just have to press crouch button in order to interrupt your grappling hook. I already did it once without mentioning, but now I am showing it explicitly, so how to do a grappling hook cancel. Use a grappling hook, press crouch button to cancel it anytime you want. That's basically it. Why do we need it? For example, we not necessarily want to travel full distance of grappling hook. Let's say we want to travel to this roof, right? Uh, let's say we don't have a, a way to reliably skip climbing animation here, so we instead using grappling hook to higher point and cancel it midway, so we can land on this roof without having climbing animation. This is one of the usages of uh, grappling hook cancellation. Sometimes we want to travel, for example, close to the fence, but not quite want to climb it. So we can... This is an interesting thing with grappling hook. Sometimes this can happen. You can get stuck in basically nothing and this will cancel your grappling hook. This is a rare case but sometimes it may, cap may happen. Well, sucks is if, if this happens but such is the coding of this game. So let's say I want to travel closer to this wall but I don't want to climb over the fence so normally we will get climbing animation. Well, since I was approaching from above I haven't had animation but let's pretend it will be here. So what I can do instead is to cancel it slightly earlier, so I will skip climbing here and I traveled the distance I wanted to travel. And yet another usage for grappling cancellation is, uh, you might have noticed that when I cancel grappling hook, I lose all my momentum. So, for example, if I want to cancel my fall damage, for example, if I fall from this building, I'm taking fall damage, but if I jump down, Use grappling hook, cancel it. I also cancel my momentum, which saves us from taking fall damage. Which is kind of important in cases if you are trying to jump from a really high point of the game, because uh, after traveling for some distance, uh, you lose your ability to use grappling hook. So pay attention to it. Do not try to fall from some skyscraper and use grappling hook right at the bottom of your fall. It won't work because uh, you will get your grappling hook disabled. So what you can do instead, use grappling hook several times to 
cancel your vertical speeds a couple of times in order to fall through higher distances. And the last point that I should make about grappling hook, uh, be careful with its usage. At the level 25 or your survival rank, uh, you'll get improved grappling hook, which means you have four consecutive usage of grappling hook. Four. After using four charges in a row, your grappling hook will go into cooldown. You can see red icon at the bottom left and during this cooldown you cannot use your grappling hook at all. You want to avoid this in a speedrun as much as possible unless uh, you don't care about going into a cooldown because you won't be able to use grappling hook anyway. Uh, you can go into a cooldown if you are about to perform a save warp because save warp will reset all cooldowns and you don't care if you just generally travel between locations. Traveling between locations also resets your cooldown. So yeah, in those cases you don't care about going into a cooldown. In the rest of the cases just try to do a little pauses between your grappling hook shots. For example, use hook once, make little pause. Use hook second time, make little pause. Use hook third time, make little pause. Fourth time, a little pause. Fifth time, and we still have a charge. Wait for a little longer, use it six time, run a little bit, use it seven times. So this way we can use grappling hook almost indefinitely. Just keep doing little pauses between your hook shots. So yeah, that was it about grappling hook. The next thing into running part is speed potions. So obviously without speed potions we move in slow, with speed potions we move in faster, so this is what we want in a speedrun, to move faster. Also, as a nice side effect, uh, speed potions increase your running stamina, so in a speedrun you generally will never run out of stamina if, if you have an active speed potion. So, how to use it also effectively? When we just drink a speed potion, we have this long animation, which prevents us from sprinting. We do like sprinting in this game, so what we can do instead, we can try interrupting our drinking animation slightly earlier. Uh, when we can do this, uh, you can interrupt your drinking animation roughly after hearing sipping sound, or if you have well, if you don't have an active speed potion buff, you will see a buff icon will appear near your health bar. Also, you might have noticed that despite I'm being drinking speed potions one after another, my speed buff is not being refreshed, it's not being extended, nothing happens to it. This is another point to make about buff stacking in general, but since we run in any percent we will have only speed potion buff. Do not try to extend or refresh buff during an active buff. Always try to drink a speed potion after expiration of old one. Uh, and yeah, about skipping animations. Uh, how can we skip animation of drinking in this game? Uh, the main method how to do it is to just use a left click, just like this. We will use it most of the time in a speedrun. This is easy to do, it's fast, it's not losing you any time. Another way is to press spacebar, to jump, and to use kick. Those methods are less used in a speedrun, especially the one with a kick, because kick also prevents you from running. Well, most of the time you don't want to kick to interrupt your speed potion. And the last method is to use another equipment piece, for example grappling hook. So you can start drinking, switch equipment and use it. You won't use grappling hook in this case, and you will still interrupt your drinking animation. Just like this. So, let's see how potion interruption works. I don't have an active speed buff, I use drink potion, interrupt it as soon as I can see buff, and I can start running immediately. 
so yeah that was it about using speed potions jumping and climbing however there is a faster way to move in this game there is basically two more techniques on crossing a large portions of the game which will we use which will be used a lot in this speedrun so first technique is called death warping which is basically an abuse of basic in-game mechanic which teleports you to the closest safe house uh, to you to your corpse for example in this case there are two safe houses nearby one is 106 meters away second one is 109 meters away so most likely if my measurements are more or less precise if i die over here i should teleport to this safe zone so let's try it toss a grenade we can see your dead screen start mission spacebar to skip the hint as soon as we can And, well, my calculations were slightly off, it got teleported us from to here. So, we crossed from this bus to here in just a matter of a couple of seconds. This will be used a couple of times in places when, when save warping is not available to us. Uh, so, feel free to try find some different death warps. There is currently not a lot of them in a the speedrun. I believe there is like... One, two, three. I think there's three death warps in the game currently. Well, maybe I'm missing something, but yeah, that's about it. However, technique is pretty much strong, so it may be underdeveloped. You may find another good death warp location. Just try theory craft by looking at the map, look at the greenhouses, look at the potential death warps. For example, if you are getting stuck somewhere here we can teleport to here by using this warp if this will happen in a speedrun just use it post it in a discord with your new find it, uh, once again this strat is massively underdeveloped so yeah about another technique called save warping it's close to this warping in terms of it allows you to cross a huge distances in the game. You can travel even to other locations. Uh, for example, we have the swamps map, we have Old Town map, so we can travel between two of them by using save warping. So what is save warping exactly? In this game, when you track side quest or main quest or some repeatable quest, for example, quarantine zones, when you quit out and press continue, the game will try to spawn you in the closest checkpoint to this quest. For example, if we will try to use Stuffed Turtle Quarantine Zone, which is located over here, when I will quit out from the game and press continue, the game will spawn me right over here. Let's see how it works. Bam, we teleported right to the quarantine zone, which saved us walking over 300 meters, which is pretty cool. We spent basically like no time at all to cross a huge distance. We can even travel to another map, like I said before, for example, if, we, if I would try to track Rupert the Gunsmith, which is the quest from Old Town, it will teleport us to the university in the Old Town. Bam, we are on a completely different map, which skipped us going to the postern tower or to, tr by, to travel through the sewers. We just crossed an insane distance by in, in a couple of seconds. So yeah, this is the second technique to cross a huge gaps. However, there is more to save warping. 
Uh, you might have noticed that each time I would into the game, I have a brief moment of time when my screen is my screen is pitch black, and then it starts slowly fade in from black to basically in-game picture. Uh, interestingly enough, we can move during loading screen itself and during this fade in animation. So this is technique is called black screen movement and it basically consists of two parts. First part is pressing buttons during the loading screen itself before we press spacebar to continue. And second part the uh, second bar uh, second part after you press the spacebar during this fade in animation. So for example, let's try warp into stuff turtle once again and move into different directions. First of all, let's try not performing any black screen movement and see when we will get spawned. Where we will get spawned? I, I think I said when. Not when. <laughs> Where. So, after loading, the game puts us near this door, basically in front of the Stuff Turtle Quarantine Zone. Let's try applying different warding moves first. Press continue and let's say start holding shift and W during this warding screen. So after I press spacebar I will release all my controls and we will see when we will spawn. Now the game puts us here near this fence which is basically like we try to cross this distance during the loading. However, after the loading I haven't pressed any button at all. So this is basically it about loading movement. And let's try combine it with the second part, which is movement after pressing spacebar. So for example, let's try going forward again. And after I press continue, let's try going to the left. Well, this moment I was moving to the left, but it was not quite the moment that is obvious to the naked eye. So let's try to find another quest with a more of... Or even, let's try using the same quest, but this time we will try to go to the right during the loading screen and go forward during the fading animation. It should work better. So, I'm going to the right during the loading, press spacebar, and start running forward. And I end up being here. So, during the first part, I moved over here, during the second part, I started running towards this van. Obviously, uh, this saved us some chunk of time, because uh, during the warding, your white split timer is stopped, so it still counts as warding time, and uh, most importantly... Oh, well, basically, it's a free time, just you want to use it any time you want, every time you want, uh, not every time you want, every time you can, because uh, who says no to a free time save? So yeah, that was it about save warping and blasting movement. Then comes a couple of tricks which are less used in Iran. One of them is used only once. Second trick is has insane potential but currently not have any use in a speedrun maybe you'll find some usage to it but currently there is no place to apply it so the first trick is called shield flying glitch to do so we need to have a shield in our inventory and the name shield flying glitch because this part is requirement to do it and what is Shield Flying Glitch? Shield Flying Glitch is a glitch that allows you to start flying by hanging onto a ledge, which is not auto climbable, and jumping off it. So, the game, we want to trick game into thinking that 
we are still hanging on the ledge or I don't know maybe there is some different stuff going on in the brains of the game but the game gets confused and it does not apply gravity to us when we jump like this so instead of falling down I will start flying in the direction I just jumped off so how to do this glitch uh, it basically consists of two parts first part is a setup for a glitch uh, and second part is jumping from a ledge like I just showed you uh, there is two ways how we can do a setup uh, first way is the easiest one and which most likely will be used in a speedrun is the medkit setup so in order to do this setup you have to be slightly damaged at least one HP of damage is enough you want to be able to use a medkit and how can we do this setup for this glitch uh, stand near some wedge jump from this wedge start healing mid-air approach the wedge again and as you start climbing it use grappling hook to cancel your healing animation that's about it it sounds difficult however with practice it's fairly easy trick and you can hit it consistently if you just train it a couple of times so let's try doing it all together and see how it works jump heal approach the ledge use grappling hook if everything worked correctly our legs now won't have any animation the game is broken it thinks that we are got stuck at this ledge or what in whatever state we are so game is confused about our game state we cannot use any weapons we cannot punch we cannot shoot we cannot do anything with our weapons we can still do climb we can jump just our animations are a little bit broken they are playing twice instead of once and also in this state we don't suffer any fall damage so we are supposed to take some damage by falling from this roof we took none of it uh, how we can cancel this glitch just use a grappling hook now we can see our leg animation again we can use our weapons everything is fine so let's do the setup again this was a bad setup be cautious that you can accidentally do a back dodge so press jump and then backwards not the other way around once again jump heal approach the ledge grab the hook easy to do then we have to find a wedge that is not auto climbable for example this wedge can be climbed automatically because there is nothing about it so the crane thinks we want to climb it and even if he won't press anything at all he will still climb it however in this case there is one wedge and then there is another one so the game won't try to climb automatically which is what we want to do this glitch walk away from the wall and press jump now we can fly. If you turn your camera, uh, you can see by the minimap we are changing our horizontal speed. We cannot change our vertical speed, we keep it constantly. However, we can slightly navigate during flying by turning our camera. If we are looking to the surface which we used for jumping, we won't have any horizontal speed. If we look away from it, we will gain some of speed into the direction we are looking at. How to cancel this glitch? As you might have guessed by the name of shield flying glitch, we have to equip shield and use the shield. That's basically it. Using shield also cancels our flying state. Also, this was kind of interesting mechanic. It's also underdeveloped because it's quite difficult to hit. So. Basically, uh, the game prevents you falling out of bounds uh, by despawning you if you are falling for way too long time. Like I just did, the game doesn't expect me to fall from such high point, so it just teleports me because it assumes I fall out of bounds. Generally, we will see it when we are indeed falling out of bounds, but 
for example, in swamps, there is actually a huge kill plane, which will kill us instantly if we will clip through the ground. So it won't work here. Uh, however, in all down, it will work. If we will fall out of bounds, it will despawn us at the closest. Basically, the same rules as for the death warping. So sometimes you may try, I don't know. Basically, I don't know how it can be any usable in a speedrun, but maybe, just maybe, there is a place where despawning like this is better than trying to do a test warp. So yeah, this was uh, one way to do a setup for shield flying glitch. However, there is a second one. Uh, for example, you don't have uh, ability to use a medkit because you are full health, like I do now. I can press H as much as I want, I won't start healing. What you can do instead is to use your speed potion. We can basically use any kind of potion, but we won't have anything apart from speed potions in any percent run. Uh, basically, the process is the same. Uh, stay near the ledge, jump off it, uh, drink a potion mid-flight, mid approach the ledge, use grappling hook. The only difficult is, the difficulty is to switch your equipment from speed potion to grappling hook and quickly use it. So if you are using a wheel selection for equipment, you might be in trouble with this setup. If you are using key binds like me for quick selection, it's fairly easy to do. So you can try skipping the setup part for medkit setup for shield flying glitch. So let's try doing it. Jump, drink, approach the ledge, grappling hook. Uh, we also got our an leg animations broken, we entered this broken state, we can try finding some not auto climbable wedge, for example this one, and jumping. Use a shield to cancel it, fall back to the ground. Another way how to do the shield flying glitch cancellation without using shield actually is slightly slower method, however well, maybe it can be usable in a speedrun if for some reason, let's say, you have a small stack of speed potions, like 99 speed potions instead of 8000, because uh, you cannot drop more than 99, which will be used to cancel this glitch. So what you can do instead is to do a setup like usually, jump, drink, cancel animation, However, instead of using shield to cancel flying, we can open inventory and drop the item we used to set up the glitch. So it can be either speed potion or uh, medkit. If you don't do medkits, you have a small stack of them. So we can try dropping it like this. This, is, this will also cancel your state. However, you might will be you might need the stuff you just dropped, so be sure to pick it up back. However, opening menu, dropping it, picking it, picking item back is not as fast as just using shield. So because of that, with shield flying glitch, most likely you use shield to cancel it. However, you may, for example, forget picking up shield, this can happen sometime, so you can use this strat to cancel the flying state as well. And uh, the last glitch that is pretty interesting, it has an insane amount of potential, however it's not yet utilized in any way in a speedrun, apart from doing a couple of swag strats. The glitch is can be referred as no clip glitch, which is already interesting name, which is which means this glitch basically allows you to clip through any wall by just walking into it. However, the problem is you can also clip through the floor and fall down and die, or you can accidentally fly high up and fall down to your death. Uh, also, this glitch can be called as hook stuck glitch or HSG in short, depending. On the person using its name, it may slightly differ 
in its name. So what this glitch is about? Uh, there is an ability to walk back during sprinting, which is by default bound to BK. You might have changed it in settings. If you haven't, it's by default to the B. Uh, interesting part about walking back is that it cancels your active animation. For example, if you start climbing and start machine B, you can hear that animation is played twice. Not in this case, but sometime you can hear it playing twice. The same works with using grappling hook. So let's try using grappling hook, walking back and using grappling hook again. For example, like this. As you can see, my grappling hook launched twice and now another grappling hook got stuck into the wall. What is more interesting, I cannot use my grappling hook anymore because the game thinks that it already connected to the wall, so it instantly gets cancelled. Uh, this is the setup for a glitch. We still cannot clip through the wall. No matter how we hug it, nothing happens at all. So, firstly, how we can cancel this state? For example, I do it accidentally or something went wrong, I want to use my grappling hook again. Pick it up from the wall, it gets stuck in, you can use it again. The only problem is uh, it gets duped in your inventory, so if you are tight on backpack space like I do, I have only 4 swords and I already filled them up, drop it on the floor, you don't care about the grappling hook, it just got duped. Uh, so yeah, how to perform a no-clip glitch completely. Do a setup like I just did. Grappling hook, cancel animation with walking back, grappling hook, check that it got duped. Then you, all you have to do is grappling some NPC, most likely it will be a random walking zombie. Now things got interesting. You may notice that when I try punching air, uh, I ex actually hit a grappling hook which got stuck in my hand, hence the name, hook stuck glitch. And also, when I am not looking down, I am slightly sliding sideways. I am not pressing any keys and I keep sliding. When I am looking down and I have equipped fists, this is the most stable state in this glitch. If I am looking any way but not up and not down, I'm starting sliding. Also, if I start punching air, I might get some random boosts in different directions. Uh, if I understand this glitch correctly, most likely it's connected to the animation your run right hand has, in which grappling hook is basically got stuck. So, how can we clip through the walls? Uh, most the most easiest way is to approach some wall and try side dodging to it. Just like this. You can clip basically into any wall you want. For example this one. Nice and easy clip out of bounds. And this is why these glitches not have any use in a speedrun. I tried clipping through the wall, I got clipped to the floor instead, and as, as I said previously, this map, Swamps, has kill plane all over the place. So if you fell through the ground, most likely you would just die. Uh, yeah, speaking about cancelling the glitch state, dying is one of the ways. I just get, I just killed myself, and I can use my grappling hook again. I'm not in a hook stuck state. Uh, and this is not all to it. Let's try doing the setup again. Do a grappling hook. Stuck glitch. Let's try picking up SMG and changing our animations by aiming. <laughs> this is what happens. We, we start getting random huge boosts. Uh, it may depend 
on the weapon you're currently holding, on what kind of boosts you get. Uh, with SMG, as far as I know, you can get the biggest boosts. However, you get the most unpredictable state by holding SMG. With military rifle, you also get punched around the game world. However, it's I think it's more stable than using SMG. And with shotgun, you slightly more stable than with SMG. With fists, you have the most the most amount of stability. Basically, the only side effect of uh, having hookstack glitch is slide slide into the side. With melee weapons, you it will be slightly more unstable than with fists, but also it can be manageable. However, it will be kind of difficult to gain boosts like I just did. Also, healing during this state or drinking potions may launch you upwards, which may find some use, may find not. I don't know. This glitch is insanely underdeveloped. Uh, nobody is using it in the speedruns. Uh, nobody knows how to use it optimally, and basically nobody knows how to tame it. You may also find different interesting speedrun videos uh, from another speedrunner and glitch hunter Bob, uh, who did Rise of the Phoenix speedrun using this glitch. Uh, and most interesting part in this speedrun that he didn't even did the challenge itself. Uh, he just fell to his death with this glitch active and came for some reason. Uh, marked all of the checkpoints in the game as passed. So he will he was able to complete the speedrun challenge in no time at all. Basically in zero seconds because game got confused about checkpoints. So yeah. This might be the case in any percent category as well. We just haven't found it yet. So if you are up for some glitch hunting, be our guests to find some use to this glitch because well Having an ability to clip through any wall in the game is insane, however, it still have no usage because the glitch is unstable. If there is any way how we can control our boosts, for example, use an SMG to gain controlled boosts forward, it will be the fastest way to travel through the game. I, I can try setting up again. Let's find a zombie. Here it is. This is easily the fastest way to travel, no doubt. If we find some way to control it, this will change the speedrun drastically. So yeah, about cancelling this state, uh, one more thing we can do is to try dealing some elemental damage from bow or crossbow. In any percent, we most likely won't have a crossbow unless you have a blueprint from some DLC. Which in turn, I think, yeah, for example, Gust of Wind can be crafted with just general junk. But most likely you won't have these ingredients in any percent, so you can forget getting crossbow. However, the bow can be ret retrieved at Quartermaster, so let's try visiting him. And here we go, take a bow from him, and let's try finding some elemental arrows. We get incendiary web arrows, which is nice, it works fine for us. Let's just try using the bow without killing ourselves. Because with bow you also get pretty unstable in the hookstuck state. So let's use grappling hook twice. Grapple the NPC. Luckily for me, there was. Well, this is what you get for using bow in your hands. In theory, shooting yourself with elemental arrow will cancel this state, however, with bow you are also extremely unstable. 
So let's try doing it once again, but I doubt I will get any positive results. I don't have any arrows. Here, I got damaged by incendiary arrow and I can start grappling again. I get rid of this hook stuck state. So yeah, basically if you want to cancel this glitch, try equipping bow and look down to maximize your stability in this state and try shooting the arrow with elemental damage. Regular arrow won't work. Don't try using it. And exploding arrow will just kill you. So try using electric arrow or incendiary arrow. And uh, yeah, that was basically it about general movement and tricks. Uh, everything else is more or less tied to the strat itself that will be performed in the speedrun. Uh, this was the tips that you can do if you want to do some routing yourself or if you want to hunt some glitches or strats. This is basically a general ways on how to do stuff in this game to move quickly. So yeah, that was it for the this part. And I will see you in the first part of the speedrun when we actually launching a game and starting for the next mission called Awakening. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.